What do you think happens after we die? Well, I don't believe in heaven and hell, but I do believe that the things you do on earth will have a purpose after life. Do you believe there's a God, I assume? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think... Because uh, God was a, a spirit, so not exactly a person, but it's totally possible. Anything is really possible in a world like this. I can't be sure yet. Well, well, let me help you very quickly. If we look at the city hall, do you know who built the city hall? Uh, some old guys? Yeah, yeah they'd be, they're dead by now, right? But, but we may not know who built it, but we know someone must have, right? Yeah. Here's why I raise that. We know that things that have a beginning need a creator. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I'd put before you that because this world, this universe has a beginning, even though we may not know who created it or may not have taken the guy out to lunch, we know someone must have made this world. Now here's where I think this becomes relevant to us. If I went to walk into the city hall right now, they get to tell me what I'm allowed to do or not do because the people in charge of the city hall, the people who built it, the people who own it, are the people who get to set the rules. And so I'd put before you, it's, it's the same way in this world, right? That because God created it, because God's in charge, he gets to set the rules. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So do you think you've ever disobeyed God's rules? Everyone technically has. There's no person on earth that is free of sin. I know there's a verse, I'm not sure which one. Yep. It says that even if you sin, you can go to heaven as long as you devote your life to God. How wicked do you think God thinks sin is? Not overly horrible, I think. He has a reason for a lot of the sins and, and just think back, it was a long, long, long time ago that he created those rules, like the, uh, was it, the uh, Ten Commandments and things like that. Yeah. Do you think you've ever told a lie before? Yeah. Very much. Yeah? A lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and what would you call someone that tells lots of lies? Obviously, a liar. Uh, do you think you've ever stolen anything? It was an accident. I promise it was an accident. What would you call someone that steals things? A thief. Jesus goes and says, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. But then he says, but if you look at someone with lustful intent, that would include like watching pornography, lusting after someone on the street. He calls that adultery in the heart. Do you think you've ever done that before? Well, yeah. <laughs> to be angry with someone is to commit murder in the heart. Do you think you've ever been angry, called someone a name before? Yeah. So here's the problem, and I promise I'm not judging you, I'm guilty as well, right? But if we were to stand before God on that day of judgment, just by those four standards, we'd be found guilty of being lying, thieving, murderous, adulterers at heart. God can't look upon our evil and be neutral. Because God is good, he must hate evil, punish evil. That means that God must punish murderers, bank robbers, rapists, racists, but he also must punish liars thieves, those who've had sexually immoral thoughts, proud moments, and called someone a name, right? That means we're on the chopping block too. It does say in the Bible that you don't go to hell for sinning, so okay. I don't think you could go to hell for being a liar, since everyone does it. Did you know Revelation 21, 8 says, and all liars and thieves and sexually immoral and adulterers will have their part in the lake of fire? Jesus says, Matthew 5, 48, after those laws that we went through in his, his Sermon on the Mount, he goes and says that you must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. He says the entry requirement to get into heaven is perfection. Doesn't it also say in the Bible that it's impossible to be perfect unless you're Jesus? That's, that's right. The natural state of humanity, the Bible says no one is good, not even one. So here's the problem. We're at a crossroads here where our actions and our lives cause us to fall short of heaven and deserve hell. How can we be forgiven? How can we be, be, be made perfect in the sight of God? Try your best to do what he's asked you to do. Like, try not to lie. Try not to uh, steal things, even if it's by accident. Imagine today I'm driving on my way home and I get caught speeding. So it was an accident. I didn't realise, wasn't paying attention or whatever. And I get a fine in the mail. If I try and do the right thing. If I try and obey the road rules all the way home, will that take away my speeding fine? No. Why not? Because you've still done it. It stops you from getting in more trouble, but it can't take away what you've already got. How would I pay that speeding fine? Money. <laughs> the government tells me the penalty that must be paid so that I can be forgiven, right? The penalty that my sin deserves is hell. So how could I pay a hell punishment? You just go to hell. <laughs> Exactly, right? The only way I could pay my own 
punishment is by going to hell. So what can be done? <laughs> Do just that, and I assume, but like, if you're saying all this, who gets to go to heaven if they don't get to go to hell? Do you know anyone in this world that's perfect, that has the ability to pay your hell punishment? No. Except for God, right? Yeah. So what did God do, out of his kindness and love, to pay our hell punishment? Well, he died and he said that was basically, he's taking, he, taking all of our sins, he's dying for them so we can be forgiven. But Jesus purchases forgiveness for us with his death on the cross as a gift. How do you receive a gift? Sometimes it's random, sometimes you do something good. Someone comes along, they buy it for you out of their love, out of their kindness, and they offer it to you, and all you have to do to receive it is... Just say yes. Take it, <laughs> right? So, Jesus offers you forgiveness to be accepted by trusting in Him, right? Trusting that He's paid it. Now, what do you think that word trust or belief or faith, they're all the same word, what do you think that word means? I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Uh, believing what He says... Yep and allowing the things that he does and know that whatever he does is going to be good for me. Okay. That's, that's a good start. Put this scenario before you. Imagine you're on an aeroplane. Plane's descending to the ground really quickly and you're going to crash. Someone walks up, puts a parachute in your hands and says, believe in this and you'll be saved. What are they asking you to do with the parachute? To put it on. When they say believe, what they're asking you to do is to rely on that parachute to save you. And sure enough, you put it on, you pull the cord, and, and you're safe. Right? That's what Jesus is asking us to do. He's, yes, he's asking us to believe that he exists, to believe that he can save, to believe that he's telling the truth, but he's also asking us, or most importantly, he's asking us to rely on him to save us, to trust in his death to pay for our sin. Two questions then. If Jesus pays for your sin, where will you go after you die, heaven or hell? Uh, heaven? Yeah, yeah. And how do you receive that forgiveness that Jesus has paid for? You've got to trust in him. So imagine this scenario. You're on your way home today. You've realized you're guilty and you deserve judgment. But you trust that Jesus pays for your sin. And then you do one more and you die a couple of minutes later. Where would you go? Heaven or hell? Uh, probably hell, honestly. Why? As much as I acknowledge Jesus was a great person, I just don't think in my life I've been shown enough evidence that I can completely trust him. As much as I acknowledge what he's done, yep. and I understand that he's helped so many people and it's probably worked, yep. it's just a little bit different for me. Recently I've been going through a really tough time in my life. I've been contemplating praying, yep. I've been doing those just little things where I just ask for a sign or something. Yep. I'm still waiting. God didn't send you a pink guy carrying a camera to talk to you about what happens after we die? You have a point. <laughs> you have a point. Oh, damn, you have a point. <laughs> God doesn't make mistakes with who I get to talk to. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm crushing it again. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to have to think about it tonight. Good, good. But just, just to back on that, that heaven hell thing, that question I asked, the, you trust Jesus, you do one more sin, you die. The answer is actually heaven. Here's why. Well, let me ask you, what were you trusting in to pay for your sin in that scenario? Jesus. Jesus. If Jesus pays for your sin, where will you go after you die? Heaven. All you must do to receive the forgiveness that Jesus has offered is trust that he paid for your sin. But... Upon trusting, remember how we talked about that gift, you'll be thankful. Maybe a simple scenario. If I'm in a house that's on fire, a fireman comes in and saves me, do you think I'll run outside and light his truck on fire and jump in it as well? Probably not. No. Will I run back into the house where I once was? Depends if there's like something in there you want to save. Uh, <laughs> right. You see, it would be foolish to go back in. I just had to be saved from that. See the point? There's nothing in that house that's worth going back in for. That's Christianity. I'll put it before you. We don't do anything in order to save ourselves. We get ourselves in such a trouble. In fact, we were the ones who lit the house on fire. The fireman saves us, drags us out, and we don't want to go back in. 
in fact, we want to thank the fireman. We want to serve the fireman. We don't want to dishonour him as well by lighting his truck on fire. What do you think I'm trying to put forward with that scenario? It's making you realise that things like lying is actually really, really bad. And that even if you're trying to do it for a good cause, it's still really bad. When are you going to trust that Jesus paid for your sin?